Good morning and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Come on, y'all. Let's walk. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of The Road to Wisdom. This is episode 213. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and thank you for joining me. Last week, I was under the weather. Um, I was sick, um, and I just didn't have the energy to do what I thought I needed to do to give to give the best product. Um, whenever I'm doing something that is led to me by God, I want to make sure I do my very best, and I was not at my very best last week. Like I said, it was cold, congested. I'm still not 100%. I'm at about 90, 95, so I'm still, I feel much better and I feel invigorated. I feel charged. I just went to church yesterday. Church uh, and pastor had an awesome sermon. Um, the choir there was awesome and it got me read. My spirit really re energized. And from that yesterday and some other things I've been reading and, and listening to, I came with today's topic. And as you can see, it's right here. It's called Plug into the Source. Plug into the Source. Now, there are times in life that you're going to feel drained in the real world and in the spiritual world. I want to focus more about that spiritual world, but in the real world, sometimes it can go hand in hand because when you're just physically tired, you're going to have to try and 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 be able to gauge that and be able to to say, "Look, I need a break. I gotta have a I gotta have a vacation. I need time away." Last week, um, well, um, the 29th of August was my birthday. And the first time since I've been working, probably about 25, 20, 25, 28 years. So in that time frame, I never took my birthday off, but I took it off and it was much needed. Um, I enjoyed myself on Thursday, Friday, that weekend. I came down sick, maybe Sunday. And then I was sick Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I came in Thursday and Friday, not 100 percent. but I still came in and, um, and, and did what I had to do. But um, I'm going to stop thinking that my job or anything else. Can run without me. <laughs> I know it can run without me. Um, there was a time, and I told one of my coworkers last week. There was a time when I thought that where I work at, or when when I was working at, whether it's this department or other departments, that it couldn't run without Danny because I had to be there. I had to be in the know. I had to be in this. Now I no longer feel that way. I know whether I'm there or whether I'm not. When I'm dead and gone, that department is still going to be there and it's still going to run. And I'm going to enjoy my life as best I can. And I'm going to try to prepare myself. Because I want to make it to heaven. That's my end goal. And when you're feeling spiritually tired and when you're feeling physically tired, you have to recharge. You have to go back sometime and plug into that source. And what I did yesterday in church, I plugged back into that source. But I was feeling really drained and run down and just like some spiritually I wasn't reading the Bible like I should. And the days that I was off and I was just kind of just doing my own thing. But you can't get lazy. You can't get slack. You can't get lax or days ago. When it comes to your spiritual health, because when you do that, that allows the devil to put a foot, a crack in the door. And when you put that crack in the door, if you're not sure and you're not certain, he'll open that crack and slide in. And I am not going to backslide spiritually. That is something that I had to, to come to realize, identify and do something about it. So what I did about it, I went to church. Fantastic sermon. The past two sermons in church was fantastic. And, and I started reading more, and now I really dive into this particular um, topic, and it's called, like I said, plug into the source. Now, if you look at the word source, the dictionary says a place, person, or thing from which something comes or can be obtained. I'll say that one more time. Source, the definition, a place, a person, or a thing from which something comes or can be obtained. Sometimes people can go to a certain place, get recharged in the physical world. Sometimes people can go by a certain person, go back home, and sometimes a person can just do something, a hobby or whatever. That's something that's relaxing to get them recharged. And in the spiritual aspect of it, sometimes you have to go to a spiritual place, a church, a place where you first got saved, the person that you first talked to. And you have to be around spiritual people. You have to be around Christians. You have to be around people that know what you're going through, know you're going through that spiritual funk, so to speak, and then encourage you and, and show you things and show you different techniques and different things you need to get back on track. And everybody, everybody needs to be 
plugged into the correct source. Because when you plug into the wrong source or a negative source, it's going to produce wrong things and negative things. And you don't want that. I definitely don't want that. I'm going to read to you a scripture coming from the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, 36th verse. 11 chapter 36 verse and it reads as follows everything comes from god everything exists by his power and everything is intended for his glory let me say that one more time come from the book of romans the 11th chapter 36 verse and it reads as follows everything comes from god everything exists by his power and everything is intended for his glory while i was in sunday school when the sunday school teacher was talking and he was saying that People can try and change. And to a certain extent, we can change individually. We can change by ourselves. There's going to come a point where, guess what? We can't do it by ourselves. If we're going to change for a positive and more righteous and more spiritual, we have to include God in that. God is going to be that extra sauce. He's going to be that salt. He's going to be that pepper. He's going to be that cayenne pepper. He's going to be that whatever ingredient that you put in that recipe for try to improve in yourself, the improvement recipe you have to have God in it. If you don't have God in the improvement recipe, you're not going to have a, a successful dish. I'm just going to tell you that point blank is something that like sugar has to be in cakes. Sugar has to be in iced tea. Sugar has to be in Kool-Aid. If you don't include God in your recipe for improvement, spiritual, whatever kind of improvement you're looking for in your life, you're not going to be successful. If you leave him out, you're not going. your cake is not going to rise. Your Kool-Aid is not going to taste sweet. Your iced tea is not going to taste sweet. Your cake is not going to be sweet. Your ice cream is not going to be sweet. That's like, me, yeah, and I know that there's other sugar substitutes. That's fine. But the real thing, the real sugar, the real God, the tri, the tri God, the, the triune God, the Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus, all one and the same. If you don't have that mixture in your improvement ingredient you're not going to be successful point blank now another scripture comes from the book of ephesians the fourth chapter the 23rd verse the fourth chapter the 23rd verse it reads as follows renew your thoughts and attitudes renew your thoughts and attitudes whenever it comes a time when you feel drained spiritually you have to go somewhere to renew your thoughts and your attitude because sometimes you get your attitude gets to the wrong place gets more to the negative end of the spectrum in the positive end of the spectrum, you're going to run into trouble. When your spiritual attitudes start going to more of the enemies end of the spectrum and not so much as God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit end of the spectrum, you're going to find yourself in trouble. So you got to make sure that you renew your thoughts and your attitudes because we live in a world today. We live in a world today that is so confusing, that is so challenging, that is so draining. My pastor said it yesterday. This world that we live in, will drain the average spiritual person. You have to make sure that you are spiritually prepared. You have to make sure that you keep plugging into the right source, the right, correct spiritual source. Because if you don't, God is not going to bless you. If you keep willfully and intentionally doing sinful things and unrighteous things, you will not get God's blessings. So you got to make sure that you plug into the correct source. And there are a lot of distractions out there. There are a lot of things that's going to try and make you deviate from that spiritual Path. You got to make sure that you stay on focus. You got to stay on point. Plug into the correct source. Um, man's sin is constantly encouraged. Our sin today is constantly encouraged and approved by the enemy. The more crazier it is, or, or as far as the way is from God's doctrine, the enemy's giving it the thumbs up. Yep, that's good. You can do it. You don't got to do that. Same way he fooled you. Don't worry about that. God told you not to eat from that, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Guess what? He was wrong. He is just thinking that you're going to be just on the same level as him. Now, first of all, Eve was fooled for believing that because she should have known that there is no person, her, Adam, any, any person that was born will ever, 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 ever be on the level of God. It is impossible. It is not going to happen. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, God is omnipotent. There is no human being on this earth. Today, that is omnipotent. Don't know everything. The only human that did know everything was Jesus. He was omnipotent. But he was, like I said, the man God, the triune God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God. Three and one. 
He's the only human being that ever knows everything. The only omnipotent person on this planet does not exist. Nothing else can come close to it. I don't care how high your IQ is. I don't care how intelligent people say you are. I don't care how rich and powerful you are. I don't care how much wisdom you have acquired. It will never, ever, ever, ever be close to what God knows and what God's wisdom is. Um, This world is trying to make us lose our spiritual identity. It's constantly empowering, empowering people to do unrighteous activities, do unra unrighteous deeds, and do unrighteous works, and have unrighteous thoughts. This world right here is not our home for believers, for people that want to make it to heaven. This is not our home. This is a testing ground. This is where God is testing us. This is where God is teaching us. We've got to make sure we get the right lessons. We've got to make sure we get taught the right lessons. Because if we fail to get those lessons and to be taught right, we are not going to make it into heaven. We've got to make sure through all our trials and tribulations, we have to stay plugged into that correct source. And that correct source is the Bible, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God. Um, my pastor said yesterday, and I, we heard, I've heard this several times throughout my life, good things happen. I mean, bad things happen to good people. There's a misconception, a misconception. And some pastors try to, try to preach this. All these pastors that preach all this, this positivity um, um, sermons and, and prosperity preaching and stuff, it always seems like good things, good things, good things, good things. Guess what? God does want us to have good things, but guess what? God's going to test us. He's going to test us to see whether or not we deserve those good things because he knows firsthand that some of us cannot handle some of the blessings he has in store for us without being properly tested, being properly taught. That's what God does things. Guess what? The book of the, the story of Job is a prime example. Job was obedient to God. But guess what? The devil asked God, gave and God gave him permission to test Job. And the devil, I mean, the devil broke Job down, took his family, took his wealth, took his house, took his cars. I mean, not cars, but he took all the things that was, was all the uh, material things that was, that was that was of value back then. He took all that. All 10 of his kids killed him the same day. All his servants, all his sheep, all his goats, all his prestige, all, all the notoriety that he had back then. The devil stripped him for it, even took his health, even had his wife turn against him and saying that, that he should curse the name of Jesus and just die. Job went through all of that. But guess what? God saw that Job was faithful. Job was obedient. And God restored him and doubled everything he had. Gave him 10 more kids, doubled all his, 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 his finance, his influence, everything. Job's friends came there and said, Job, you had to do something. I mean, Job had three or four friends that came. Question his obedience, question his loyalty, question his, his character. They knew what kind of man Joseph was, but because something bad happened to a good person, they automatically went to what we all do when we see bad things happen to people. Oh, they must have done something. Danny must have done something. There's no way that would have happened. He had to done something. No, bad things happen to good people. Just because you're saved, just because you are. A child of God, you're a Christian. Just because you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins does not mean that every bad thing out there is not going to come on your doorstep. How you survive those bad things that come on your doorstep is be plugged into the correct source. Be plugged into the right source. When you plug into the wrong source, then that's when bad things can get worse. But when you plug into the correct source, that's when bad things can get better. So make sure you stay plugged into the right source. There was a, a particular thing, and I want to close with this, um, that I was having trouble with. And, and I was being plugged into man's source versus being plugged into to, to God's source. But I got, I got myself straight now. I got my thought processes straight. I talked to my cousin, and she explained something to me. And I also talked to another person, um, Sunday school teacher, uh, Mr. Neal, at um, our church. And... The big thing I was kind of having a, hunt, a hang up on and didn't understand was like the topic of abortion. And I was under the mindset to just recently that, look, if a woman has been raped, a woman is having medical issues that could possibly um, cause her to die in childbirth, or if it's been incest, then I see nothing wrong or I can understand aborting that baby. And then I went and started asking people and saying, well, what do you think on this? What do you think on that? And then my cousin, she said, well, Nana, I read it in the Bible. And 
there's nothing to excuse. There's no, there's no excuses. There's nothing that God um, says that is okay to do this and that in this particular circumstance as it pertains to abortion. Talk to the Sunday school teacher, um, friend of mine now, um, Neil, and he said pretty much the same thing. So I'm like, hmm, it just doesn't seem right. If, if this lady was raped, this lady is incest by someone, or if this person um, could possibly die if they carry baby the full term, that it would be it that would that it, that should be okay. But then I start reading the Bible because sometimes when you tap into man's source, it can mislead you. When you tap into the Bible, the true source, and you plug into that source, it tells you exactly what you need to know. And I read Jeremiah, the first chapter, fifth verse, and it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appoint you as a prophet to the nations. So God told this person, I knew you before you went to the, room, to the womb. I formed you. He said, before I formed you, God forms each and every child in the room. And he says, and before you were, were born, I consecrated you. If God consecrates something, whether it could be incest, whether it could be rape, whether it could be this child, the child, the 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 full carrying the baby to full term could possibly injure, could possibly risk your life. If God consecrated and put life into that womb, then no man should be allowed, or woman, I know it's her body, should be allowed to destroy that life. Because if you have faith, if your faith is strong, then your faith should, I think, encourage you to go to full term and let God handle it. Because there's a reason why that happened. And I know some people are saying, well, Dana, how can God do, allow this, this, and this to happen? Look, if you read the Bible, God allowed a lot, allowed a lot of things to happen. The Bible says we don't know his word. I mean, we don't know his actions. God thoughts, not our thoughts. We cannot sit here and try to pick apart why God chooses to do A, why God chooses to do B. We have to have faith and knowledge and understanding to know that he knows what he's doing. Even, with, even though we don't understand it, he knows what he's doing. Now, I want to read this last uh, scripture, which is going to... To, to really, in my mind, cement that abortion is definitely um, something that God is against. And it comes from the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, the 16th through the 19th verse. Proverbs, the sixth chapter, the 16th through the 19th verse. And it reads as follows. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that de devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to run into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Now I'm going to focus on that third one. Hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. It can be no more innocent than a baby in the womb. And you shed that blood, you make that conscious decision to abort that, that pregnancy with God. Yeah, women are the, the vessels that carry it. And we let, and we say that man and woman together create life. But God ultimately is the one that creates life. Because as you know, in the book, Abraham and Sarah, 90 years old, they tried many times, couldn't create life. Not until God okayed that. Not until God blessed that. Not to God allow that to happen. So ultimately, any life that comes here on earth, God has okayed that life. He has consecrated that life. And it says one of the seven things is he hates the shedding of innocent blood. So when you kill that baby, even though you were raped, even though maybe you were, there was incest involved, even though there may be a risk to your life as a mother for carrying that baby to full term, God hates that. He does not want innocent life. Blood. He does not want innocent bloodshed. So for those of you that was on, maybe on the fence like I was, to me, that's crystal clear. Make sure you plug into the source, the correct source, the spiritual source, the righteous source to get your answers. The Bible has the answers. You just have to sit down and take the time to look for it. And the God will reveal his answers, his thoughts, his doctrine to us all. So.
that's just my two cents on that. Again, I encourage you all to plug into that source. Make sure you plug into the right source. Now, as always, I'd like to end with this. And times in life, you're going to come across individuals. They're going to challenge why you believe in God. They're going to challenge you why you go to church. They're going to challenge you that there is no heaven, there is no hell. They're saying you're just wasting your time. Even some are going to say you're going to come back re in reincarnation. When you hear those individuals, you make sure you read your Bible and you prepare yourself for these answers because there's going to come a day when somebody's going to challenge your spirituality, when somebody's going to challenge your belief. And you tell them something along the lines of this. You say, hey, look, I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. It comes from Pastor Vody Botham. You can check him out on YouTube. I hope that you all had a fantastic uh, weekend. If you went to church, I hope you definitely enjoyed it because I definitely enjoyed my pastor, Pastor Al Sims of Bethesda Church of God here in South Carolina where I live. And I hope that you plug into the right source. There are a lot of sources out there. There are a lot of sources out there that try to deceive you, that try to get you off the, the, the right, righteous spiritual path. You make sure that you don't deviate from that. You make sure that you stay in touch with God. You make sure that you have a conversation with God each and every day. Because the devil, the enemy, wants you not to have that conversation. He wants you to get plugged into his source. And his source is going to definitely lead you down the wrong path. So until Wednesday, hope you all have a fantastic Monday morning. I know I am. And until then, I love you and God bless you. See you later. Danny Graham, he speaks so clear. Love thy neighbor, hold them dear. Bible wisdom every day. God's on path, the only way. On the road to wisdom, right? Follow God through darkest nights. Bible's words are God in life. Marching forward with His might. Hear the stories from above. Jesus' power, purest love. Trust in Him no matter fall. Grace is here for one and all. Bright. Follow God through darkest night. Bible's words are guiding light. Marching forward with his might.